烧，银铃声，卡埃拉铃，阿萨卡哈拉铃，扎卡拉铃，烧埃铃铃声。Namaste. So, what is this thing? Huh? What is this dharma sar? This essence of dharma thing? Huh? Well, actually, it's three things in one. <laughs> We like triples around here. And the first thing it is, in a very simple, straightforward way, is a journal of my spiritual quest over the last. Ten years or so. See, I reached a point where I was dealing with a faith-based process, and I had researched it very deeply, and I found at the root that it was a fabrication. So, at that point, I made a very important decision that I will not be involved with faith. Based processes, only experience-based processes. Only if I can experience something directly within my own self will I accept it as true. And I will not accept beliefs that are outside of any kind of experimental verification. Fine. So I started from existentialism and I went into Buddha's teaching, and then later I came back to India and I went into Advaita, and finally the Sri Vidya. And in the Sri Vidya, I found—I mean, literally—the mother load. <laughs> Wonderful, uh, inclusive, and complete guide to self-realization. So. At that point, once I had verified that in my own experience, I said, "Well, let's make a course site." So instead of just watching videos like entertainment, people can actually learn the principles of this whole process from one end to the other, from the beginning to the end, huh? As the peacock who lives next door. <laughs> so, we created me and a small team of volunteers created a course site. Here's the link. And on this site are more than seventy courses on the different series of videos that we've produced over the years, and these have guidance for. Actual application of the course materials, and so by going through these courses and learning the materials, and also becoming a volunteer and helping to guide the other students, you can become a mentor.、Huh? Now we don't have gurus, we don't have teachers, we have mentors. And what is a mentor? A more experienced friend, someone who has the experience. Emphasize that word <laughs> to guide you into a higher level of consciousness. And how do we measure that? <laughs> well, we have a system, an ontological system based on the chakras. This is called the Chatur Darshanam. You see, you have the seven chakras on the left: genitals, dantian, solar plexus. Heart, throat, forehead, and crown. Then the next column is the darshanam. Darshanam means views. So the lowest view in the lower three chakras are the dvaitavadas. The dvaitavadis see things in terms of duality. Their yoga is karma yoga, and their level of consciousness is waking consciousness. The next group in the throat and heart chakras. Is called Vishishta Dvaita Vada. Vishishta Dvaita means qualified non-duality, and their yoga is Bhakti, and they enter into and transcendentalize 
the state of dreaming, svapna consciousness. The next group is centered on the forehead chakra and is called vivartivada. Vivarta means illusion. So this is the theory of illusion and projection of maya. Their yoga is raja yoga and their consciousness is that they go into the deep sleep, shushupti consciousness, and they explore and realize emptiness. And finally, the crown chakra, that's the seat of enlightenment. And this is called ajatavada. Ajata means non, not born. They see the world as never existing. Their yoga is jnana, and their consciousness is turiya, or transcendental. That's our second level, huh? Those who have reached that turiya consciousness, and they can mentor others. So then there's a third level, and this is our moonshot level. This is our, this is our unicorn level, huh? That, as we have detailed in several recent videos, the current global civilization based on dualism, uh, duality, and uh, Aristotelian black and white uh, binary or digital logic uh, is falling apart. It has peaked and it's beginning its decline. So the question is, what will come next? What will be the basis of civilization in the post-technological age? We're already thinking that far ahead. Huh? Well, why not this esoteric teaching? Why not the essence of Dharma? Why don't we go back to first principles and construct a civilization that has real spiritual values? And what are they? A real spiritual civilization should be inclusive. It should be open to everyone. It should not be biased against anyone because of race, color, national origin, religion, sexuality, or any of the other things that people use to exclude others. Yeah, economic platform or whatever. Huh? It should be open to everyone. It should be free. And everyone should be able to participate equally. So then the next one is nonviolent. We don't believe in violent conquest. If we're going to win someone over with our arguments, uh, with our good knowledge and our good character, then, you know, the, that's a accepted. <laughs> but violent means are not accepted. No kind of coercion, no kind of force is acceptable. Then it should be transparent. There shouldn't be any secrets. Everything should be right out on the table and completely known all the way up to, you know, management decisions and budget and everything like that. That should be completely public. And it should be non-political. We don't take sides on issues in the world. You know, if, if some people want to live their life in a different way, it's none of our business. And it's none of their business how we live our lives. Uh, so we don't fight with anybody politically. And we're non-sectarian. That's another part of inclusiveness. In other words, our system of seven chakras and four views is universal. It applies to everybody. Christians, Jews, Islamic people, Hindus, whatever. Uh, Vaishnavas, Shaivites, everybody has seven chakras. Everybody has four states of consciousness. You know, the four noble truths apply to everybody. So this is universal. This is non-sectarian. And this is the basis of our whole teaching. And we're decentralized. We don't have any central uh, core. Uh, we don't have any big headquarters somewhere. <laughs> We're decentralized. We're going to have lots of little groups in every country, in every town in the world. And then also we're non-commercial. We don't charge for our services. It's all volunteer service. So 
That means you don't have to have money to join or participate. And we'll arrange things in such a way that that will always be true. You'll never see an ad on this channel. You'll never see us ask for donations. And finally, our scheme of organization is non-hierarchical. Well, what does that mean? We're simply advisors. We're simply mentors. We're simply collecting and sourcing information. Huh? We don't have any authority over anybody. We don't have any control over anybody. We're not saying that one person is better than another person. Well, you might say, well, what about that chart that shows these four levels of consciousness and like that? Well, yeah, in spiritual life, there is a definite progression or evolution of consciousness that has been observed over thousands of years. And this is going on. But that doesn't mean that a person in this level or stage is better than a person in this level. They're not better. They're equal. And so we don't discriminate on the basis even of spiritual advancement. Although we encourage everybody to go for the highest level of, of realization of consciousness. But still, uh, we don't make any difference. We don't treat anyone differently based on their state of consciousness. So, this would be the kind of civilization that would result from our teachings. Now, is this better than the current culture, the current worldwide so-called civilization based on cow killing and war with nature and depletion of the resources of the whole planet and climate change? and genocide, and ex ec economic centralization, exploitation? We think so. And we think a lot of people will agree that this is a better foundation, this is a better template for the development of culture. Now you might ask, well, how is this going to play out? Well, you can join our course site. I gave the link earlier and you can take the courses and you can become a qualified spiritual mentor and then you can do whatever you want. <laughs> we don't try to tell you what to do. If you want to start a commune, if you want to start a farm community, if you want to start uh, some kind of organization, a religious organization, let's say a uh, Hindu religious organization, Vaishnava or Shaivite or a Shakta or a Jewish or Christian organization based on these teachings, fine. If you want to form a business based on these principles, great. If you want to create a government based on these principles, wonderful. We support you completely, although we don't have anything to do with what you're doing. Huh? We don't have any control or authority over you, and we don't, neither do we endorse you. Huh? You're simply a member of our group, and you learned and, and took some courses, and now you're going out in the world and applying them. And it's up to you what you do with them. Whether you do well or badly, whether you help or harm people, it's completely up to you. You see, this is the advantage of a flat organization. Once you get the information, and once you realize the consciousness that we're talking about, it's between you and God. Huh? It's between you and Brahman. You are responsible for your actions and their results. Because that's the way it is anyway. Anything else would be a lie. So we don't believe in lies, so <laughs> we won't deceive you like that. But this is the plan. Huh? Right now we have a course site that you can join. And you can take the courses. There's 70 courses. They're all free. You get lots of help from our mentors. And then do what you will. Huh? And there is no blame. So this was the basis 
for a new world. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung.